The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt D&D. My name is Johnny Payne, and I play the half-elf roguish warlock, Zonimus, who's going to take back everything he's ever lost. I'm Connor Chenold. I play Connor with a K, the kobold sorcerer who's a continuous thorn in the Empire side. I'm Kiri Hester, and I play Poppy Tealeaf, a halfling druid determined to protect the wilds of the frontier from the might of the Empire. I'm Brooke Bullock, and I play Mokrin Stoneshape, our young dwarf sorcerer finding his true family as revealed by the secrets of the frontier. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Callban Frontier. on the frontier is not a strange sight. An orc on the frontier fighting two sand creatures, now that's a little out of the ordinary. On your journey down to Fort Rushing Water, you have come across a fearless warrior, absolute madman, bravest orc what has ever waltzed about the frontier. You have decided to jump in and assist him. With one of the sand creatures down, there is but one remaining that, wow, Still hardy, doesn't look quite as hale as it once was. So, my mysteriously brave orc friend, it is your turn. One more time, onto the breach. Here we go, little one. 14. Swing to miss. Ah, oh, so close. One more time. 28. There we go. <laughs> Four. And are we reckless? We are reckless. 13 points of damage. 13, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. No, it's nope. it's new character. 16 points of damage. Oh. I'm forgetting my rage damage. Oh. Hey! That was all a bunch of plus threes that I forgot. So, with that, Poppy, my turn. Okay, I'm going to sword and try to hit him. That's going to be a 27. 27 will hit. Okay, so 1d6 for the scimitar, 1d6 for my extra force damage because I'm still guardian of nature. Mm-hmm. So that's in 12 slashing okay. from me, and okay. then I'm going to have Wildfire try to bite him. Okay. Get in this spot, Wildfire. 18. Will hit. And he will just do his little t4 damage with his little teefies. He only does 7. Wait, seven. wait, math. That math was wrong. Don't accept that math. 5. 5, okay. Well, and it's half even further because, because he's he is not, not magical. magical. So that will uh, be I see your trusty cool. steed is just as good. Bites his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Zani. I'll raise my bow again. Fire away. Oh, what's an 11? Nope. I'm going to put my bow away. Walk a little closer. Okay. Let's stand there. Makana? Yeah, Makana's going to try one more time. All right. And... Dang it. Third time no. is not the charm. Third time is definitely not the charm. We had one hit, two misses. Yeah, he swirls together another chromatic orb, slows it, throws it, and uh, it's a modified, oh, maybe. It's a modified 12. No. Yeah, it is. All right, my sand silhouette will go for our orc friend once more trying to slam into him. That is going to be a 20 natural more. That will be 28 points of bludgeoning damage. Reduced 14 because mm-hmm. I'm raging. Mm-hmm. And it will try to slam against you again. It'll be at 26. Hold on. The tail tried to block it out of the way and didn't do it. <clears throat> All right. So you will take another 3d6 worth of damage. It will be 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Reduced to eight. And you are currently grappled as 
this sandy silhouette is whipping around you and like literally has engulfed you inside of itself. All right. So, so since you are engulfed by the creature, you are considered blinded and restrained, but not grappled. You will have to make saving throws at the start of your turn to see if you take further damage. Great. Connor? Okay, so this time, instead of the chaotic energy, I pull up instead a bolt of fire and try and hurl it at this thing. Okay. Okay. Whoops. Never mind. Uh, Yeah, I'll use a fate trip. Okay. Try that again. (coughs) Oh, nope. Um, That's a... 12. All right, and so my mysterious orc friend, you are currently engulfed by this creature, and you are considered blinded and restrained. Give me a escape against the grapple. Is that a strength? Yes. Okay, so that's at fifth advantage because I'm raging. Saving throw, correct? Yes. 25. All right, now you managed to slide ah. out of this thing, grip. Ha ha! You thought you had me, but no! All righty then. That's my action to get out. Any bonus action that you would like to try? No. Now that he's not in the thing anymore, I can try to hit it. I was worried for a second. <laughs> no! That's only an 11. Nope. So I try, and it doesn't work. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll fling my bow back up. A little help here. 25. Will it? And then the damage is 19. Okay, this thing is looking real rough. Machrin? Machrin, learning his lesson, reaches out and points at Connor and imbues him with a little bit of magic for True Strike. Okay, do. Well, then it will be the sand creature's turn, and it is upset that you escaped from it, but it does not have advantage because you did not reckless attack. So, first will be a miss. Second will be a 26. The tail comes back up and knocks it out. All right. Moving right along then. Kind of. Okay. I kind of shake my hands, preparing myself for this, feel the energy from the true strike from Makarin, and I'm going to try the firebolt again. No. No, man. No. I I sit back down. (laughs) They got this. (laughs) All right. My mysterious orc friend. All right. Now we are ready. And I come back with my long sword, recklessly attacking. Oh, goodness. No, 13. No. A three and a one. That's right. 20, non-natural. Will hit. 15 points of damage. All right. Yes. With a mighty swing. You cleave through this thing with your long sword, dispersing it with a pained howl upon the wind as the sand settles around you all. And he settles down, breathing, calming himself, and the tail seems to disappear. As he looks over, he says, Well met, friends! What brings a, an elf, a halfling, a dwarf, and a... Hi. I have to admit, I have not seen a kobold in many, many moons. What brings you all out here? Good job, an orc. Yeah, I'll start speaking to you, an orc. Good job dispatching those, whatever they are. So he returns to you, an orc. He says, you speak orc, <laughs> my elven friend. I open my mouth and flash my stubbed up, non-pointy orc things. You should grow your tusks out. <laughs> yeah. I don't do this on purpose. You are quite the master with a bow. Thank you. You're quite the master with that tail? Yes, well, an old trick I learned from my mother. So, what brings your friends out here? Back into common. We're on our way to Fort Rushing Water. Ah, well then, you've come to the right place. I myself am heading back to the Great Mother River. My name is Gaz, and you are? Zonimus Tanar. And you, little one, uh, you are fierce in battle. Thank you. That's a compliment, right? Yeah, from an orc, for sure. Okay. Hello, my name is Poppy, and it's very nice to meet you, I guess. And I put my hand out for a handshake. And I shake your little tiny head <laughs> and your steed here. Oh, his name is Wildfire, but as you touch my hand to shake my hand, you are going to get 16 hit points. Wow. Whoa. And you are a healer, too. Fantastic. I do what I can. So, 
We were just gonna go this way. Are you gonna go this way? Are we gonna go like separately and just awkwardly walking you by? Oh no, I owe you a debt. I certainly would have had my troubles with those sand silhouettes, but thank you so much for your help. I see you have more. I turn over to the cart and I see you. I saw your magic from over there. Powerful, powerful magic. Uh, the dwarf and the kobold, what, what are your names? Mockerin's in the seat a little bit. Where's I'm Mockerin, Mockerin Stone Shaper. Mockerin Stone Shaper. And you, my friend, Kobold. Name's Connor. Connor. With a K. Don't forget it. Connor the Kobold. Brass Kobold. Yeah. Fascinating. What of it? Zon has some poppy share look. <laughs> you do not see many brass kobolds about. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, if you are heading to Fort Rushing Water, I uh, certainly would like to join you. And you're heading to the Great Mother River. I was. You are? I am. Well, I was, and then these things popped out and blocked my way. But... What, what's your business at the river? I was going to cross it. It's what you do mostly with rivers. <clears throat> How do you uh, cross the river? I know how we cross the river. How do you do? Just... Well, I have to go to Fort Rushing Water, which has a way across. Oh, that makes There's sense. a bridge down near Fort Rushing. Yeah. <laughs> so you're familiar with these parts? These of areas. course. Of course the Caliban is my big sandbox. <laughs> All right. Well, we glance over Poppy. You got a horse? Of course. Do you have a shirt? <laughs> the orc uh, looks at you. Very strange. And he says, yes, I have a shirt. <laughs> do you need a shirt? No, I don't need a shirt. Yes, I, I have a shirt if I need it. However, at this moment, I don't. I let the sun bear down on my beautiful green skin. I give Zonimus a pat on the arm, um, and I say, you know, I've seen I've seen men shirtless before. It's okay. Well, I've seen orcs shirtless before, but not in travels. Okay. Apparently, <clears> people <throat> accept him this way, I but maybe you should I, get, I, I you know. I don't know if you'd want to travel with us. Sometimes... I mean, we seem to draw on more attention. Well, you seem to be heading in the same direction that I am, and it's always awkward when you say farewell and both of you head in the same direction. So, we might as well walk together. In the spirit of avoiding awkwardness. Correct. I guess I can't say no to that. And we have four days. You say Gaz? Gaz. It's a nickname, but yes. What is Gaz short for? Gazdaw. Gaz Yash. <laughs> cousin of Yaz Gash. I was wondering, but I didn't say nothing. <laughs> wondering what? It's, thinking... it's impolite to assume that all people of a given race know each other. That's impolite. So I that don't is know. true. I don't know all halflings. The only one from the last stop. Well, yes, I know many people east of the Great Mother River. Well, your name's just awful familiar to uh, to uh, some people that live there. Ah. Like Yaz Gash? Yaz Gash. We right. know Yaz Gash. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I do actually know Yaz Gash. She's my mother. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the Merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow d and My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons & Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. 
It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind the curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d 20 tocurtaincom or at d 20 tocurtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday. Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon and plausible deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. quite interesting information. You just seem very different, is all. How so? She is a fine warrior, as is my other mother. Yeah, but see, you're like adding like an 11, and she's like a solid 6. Mockery just... looks at Poppy with a kind of <laughs> a raised of eyebrow like... Like, like you're just... You think about it. it makes I wasn't sense. saying in attractiveness. I was saying, no, no, like, yeah. you're way up here. You got a lot going on. Mockery remembers the first time we heard their voices yelling at each other, Mazaga and Yazgash. And uh, so he to- it totally fit. Yeah, no, I know Yazgash is wonderful. Uh, Tommy's feeling, honestly, like a lot of jealousy. That is her first well, gut reaction. <laughs> and she doesn't understand why. How is it that you all know Yazgash and Mazgash? Let's, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's mount up and we can talk while we ride because we're losing light. Yeah, and I whistle and my horse comes over. <laughs> Our friend Mokrin here has an uncle. That's me. Yes. Keep going. Jacoby Blackhands of the Blackhands Rail Company. Ah, and I that... pause to see if there's any reaction from the times we've had that name before. No, the name dropping doesn't work with the wild. Right, <laughs> and then there's nothing. <laughs> I'm guessing he is a great dwarf of, of power and battle. Sure, I'm an not... inventorist. He don't work at the rail lines. It's, that's the steam firestone powered engines that I don't want to trade it. Okay, very good. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, have you been to Ventures before? No, I have never been that far east. Okay, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Hey, Kana, do you want to... And she motions, like, towards the sky. Or do you want to, like, stay here? It's up to you, I guess. I mean, I was gonna. I just didn't know if you wanted to come. Uh, Yeah, sure. I'll go with you. Okay. So I'm going to use a wild shape. I'm going to um, giant eagle. And then I'm going to do the thing that we've gotten really good at by this point, where I pick them up with my feet and I throw them and then I swoop them and we fly. That is amazing. So So, uh, (laughs) you, she apparently is a druid of some renown. That's our poppy. So yeah, like like Mokra was saying, we were hired by the Black Hand Rail Company to map the frontier. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fantastic. And how is that going? Well, it's going great. It's, I mean, uh, we've uh, all the places and things. And then I remember something from the other night. Mostly boring. It doesn't change. We haven't really done it. It took us about 700 years just to get out of here. <laughs> well, we ran across somebody who, wow, uh, we serve a bigger purpose now. As you should. Well, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we're still, we're still going to try and do our best work for the Black Hands, but we've uncovered a plot. A plot, you say? A uh, ploy. Ploy. You know the history of the land very well here? Bed stories as children. Yes, my mothers have told me much about the history. Now, they happen to speak to you about the empire. Oh, yes. 
evils of the Empire. Mm -hmm. well, that is, of course, how we get the name, the Caliban. Okay, so someone's trying to bring back the Empire. Interesting. Very. And it seems like it could actually happen if we don't stop them. Well, that sounds like quite the ploy. It is, indeed. And how have you been able to hinder this group from doing what it is they're trying to do? Well, we keep trying to jump ahead of them. Our plans have been really good. And they're, it's just, we're uh, getting overpowered. I see. It's not so much that they have the numbers as they have the strength. So this is no small group. Yeah, it's just three dudes. I mean, as far as we know. Yeah, and all them dominated kobolds and yeah. dragonborn. So yeah, it's three evil beings and they are using magic and other arcane methods to enslave a workforce. So you have taken them on in battle? We have. I see. We have also recently lost one of our numbers in battle with them. I am sorry for your loss. I have lost companions as I have traveled the Caliban. It is never easy to lose one, but sometimes moving forward in their name is also very important. And that's what we're doing now. We are heading to Fort Rushing Water to resupply, and well, I guess we're on a mission of sorts. What do you know about Fort Rushing Water? How's it uh, going there? Have you been lately? Well, I go back every now and then. I sometimes have to also resupply and sometimes head home to the last stop to see moms. It's been a while, but it's a <laughs> fort. I mostly just cross it and get what I need and move on. I don't usually stick around for any politics or any other news. So Zodimus is going to try something new. Well, we're on our way to Fort Russian Water to resupply. We understand there might be a situation at Fort Russian Water that would need our attention, but we're not going to give it that attention right now because we are heading to a nearby mine in hopes of harvesting a powerful crystal that we can use on a ship that will give the ship flight. Flight, you say? Yes. It will give us flight so that we can move further across the desert in our quest to stop the Empire from rising. That would be quite a feat to make something fly. Well, I have first-hand experience of being on one of these ships, and we've all seen one fly recently. And you're saying the people that are wanting to make this Empire they have these ships that can fly. They have one at least. And what is their goal? The leader of the Empire from long ago, wait to see if you say his name. Do I know his name? No. Was Cimarron, and he was too strong to be put down. So instead, he has been held all these years. They have supposedly learned of his location and the means to free him, to bring him back to power, to restore the Empire, and step on all of us again. And is your goal to stop this? Yes. Well, I can think of no other lofty goal. If I could be of assistance, I would certainly relish the task of defending the Caliban frontier. Zonimus is wishing Poppy was here next to him. So bad, because he's trying to do what Gideon wants him to do, but it's so hard. So, Will, you come from good stock. I Thank you. I can say that from sure. I'm glad you noticed. Mokrin is smiling because Zonimus is like being so forthright and it's just, clear. Oh, no mystery. Yeah. It's and exactly it's, what we're doing, where we're going, what we're going to do when we get there, and why. Yeah. It reminds him of Gideon. I did want to ask you, you had mentioned knowing Yazgash, Mazga. How do you know them? Oh, in our travels to map the frontier, we, of course, had to leave the civilized world behind and the last stop. Uh, they're in the last stop and our friend Puppy that just flew away uh, has sort of a natural connection. Uh, has kind of looked upon them as a mentor. Thistletop, which uh, is Zonimus is riding right here, and Buttercup, this fine draft horse, and this cart, or all, you know, we were able to get arrangements and stuff from uh, Yazgash. Well, I can think of no better mentor for any druid than my own mother. She's very powerful. And I know your young friend said that I seemed to be a little bit more exuberant than she was, but you didn't know her when she was young. I think, yeah, exactly. I was about to say, I think you just seem less settled. And, and not so much Yazgash. Yazgash was a druid. She was in touch with her more, shall we say, mellow side. But my other mother, 
Mazga. Oh, she, she could bellow. Oh, I wish I could do it justice. It was shoot. Even when I've left my toys out. We've, she we've, was very loud. We've heard her bellow a few times, and I'm flashing back to her in the kitchen yelling at you. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. Let's go resupply and see how we fare in the mines. If you feel like this is still a noble cause that you'd stand for, we'd like to have you. I agree, Fred Zonimus. Do I see the badge? Is the badge Not yet. Mm-hmm. Okay, then that's what it means. I agree, Fred Zonimus. And hopefully, we shall see fair weather for the next four days as we travel to Fort Rushing Water. I will, in Orcish, say a quote about wind and rain. <laughs> and he returns in Orc and says, and I agree, Fred. So up in the sky, there's the puppy eagle. I don't want to get like too far ahead of them, but I want to keep an eye out for what looks like a good stop and spot. So you said it was noon. Yeah, noon day, middle of the day. So I guess after, in the late afternoon, early evening, <laughs> I would have to come back down and turn back into Poppy, of course, and continue riding on to the camp. It's like we can change the watch rotation. It's been a long time since I've had companions to hold watch. You know, I have a question. I have an answer. Uh, forgive me if this is out of line. Did those swirling wind, sand, what'd you call them? Sand silhouettes. Did they kind of catch you by surprise or... Did Nothing they... catches me by surprise. Or did you see them and go running towards them looking for a fight? Oh, I see. Well, they weren't so much a surprise. Okay. So much as they were there. I was there. Now they are not there. It's how it usually works. I am usually then still there. You sure do keep things simple. True. You want first watch? I am fine with first watch. How does the little one feel about first watch? I usually do take first watch. Yeah. But... <laughs> Tell you what. But I'm an eagle now, so it, it's less super. Oh, I thought you'd change t- 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 back. End of day. You, so but I have two. Pop. I have two. Oh, in, you switch so, back. Well, so usually during watch, I'll turn into an eagle so that I can see in the dark. Ah, oh, gotcha. Because <laughs> Poppy can't see in the dark. <laughs> right. Uh, but that was why I usually took first watch was because it was still a little bit light. If you don't mind, I would very much like to talk to you before you turn into an eagle. Sure. What can I help you with? Well, I understand from your friend Zonimus that you know and have taken on Yazgash as a mentor. I mean, I surely don't know her as well as you, but yes. Oh, well, yes, she's my mother. That, that would be very difficult to know her better than I do. Mm-hmm. But she also never taught me about any druidic powers. Well, I mean, there's a certain level of latent ability. And I say, are you in touch with, with She Who Weeps? I mean, as much as anyone can be in touch with She Who Weeps, but I like to think so. Well, I haven't seen my mothers in five, six, seven years. How are they doing? They look great. I mean, honestly. I mean, they're keeping everything good. You've got Windrunner that's do- looking great. That rapscallion. Yeah, he's, he's still asleep. I mean, as much as any adolescent who's body is growing and changing. But I mean, you know, last stop is the last stop. It can only change so much. Well, I must say your abilities while we were fighting, impressive and good to have by my side. No, that wasn't nothing. Well, I wouldn't say that. You haven't seen the tip of the iceberg, my guy, <laughs> and a uh, little thunder. Ha <laughs> 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 yeah. I look forward to it. We shall have many battles together, my young friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cranforth. Listen. The world is switching. Zonimus is hi, welcome, and Poppy's the one with Poppy. She she has she doesn't understand. She hasn't had really a lot of time to really process and to what she's feeling. And listen, you know who she would go to to talk about these feelings? Gideon. Yep. And now he's not there, and so she doesn't understand how because Gideon would tell her, you know. Talk to her about, you know, listen, feelings are all, everybody has feelings. We all have big feelings sometimes, and it's okay. <laughs> and I haven't had a chance to process that or talk to Zonimus or anything about it yet. So, yes, I'm a little standoffish. <laughs> so when you do your watch, do you do you also change again? It depends on the day and the amount of sunlight and which watch I'm in. Because, you know, I'm just, 
um, in my normal form I can't see in the dark but if I'm an eagle I can see in the dark or sometimes I'll turn into a wolf and wildfire and I will you know play play tag and you know it depends on the day and my mood well friend Poppy if that makes you feel more comfortable you may change and I will go sit by the fire and you can come get me when your watch is over and I will take over okay feeling the understanding that you seem a little bit a little standoffish <laughs> Thomas, do you want to come with me and Wildfire to do a, per a perimeter? No, I'm fine. Thomas, come with me and Wildfire to do a perimeter check. All right, I'm coming. And so I wait until we're a little bit away from camp. I know this is probably new for you. I don't talk. I, this is normally a conversation on how to get in, unfortunately. But I don't. There's a part of me that doesn't like that guy, and I don't know why. And I'm suspicious that I may be feeling a little bit jealous because, like, I really like Yazgash and I wanted to grow up with her as my mom, but he gotta grow up with her as his mom. And so I don't understand. And I know that I don't really, this is more of one of those conversations where I don't need you to fix anything, I just need you to listen. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk through some of my mommy issues while we walk <laughs> around the camp, if that's okay. 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 When you're done, I'm just gonna hold on to the Unless you say something really profound. Hold on to what you said in the beginning about the jealousy. You would love to be raised by her. And I'm gonna, so you wanted to be part of Yazgash's family. What, what better thing than to meet even more of it? Okay, that's valid. Listen, you make a good point. You're meeting an extension. Yazgash isn't here with us. But he's like a bit much, right? That's not just me. I'm sure when Yazgash was young, she was running around with her shirt off, <laughs> good fights in the desert. <laughs> No, it was Mazga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she was chasing Mazga. <laughs> trying to get her to put her shirt back on. <laughs> Taking fights in the desert. Out here, just two crazy orcs. Take, I mean, he, he is an extension. He is part of that family. You're making like valid you points. You're making valid points. I don't feel like that's completely true, that last part that you said. But, you know, because we only really hung out, like, four times. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where just give me a couple days, I'll feel better about it. I wasn't trying to make a point, I was just talking. I understand. So what did you, what'd you tell them? What's our story? We're, we're out here doing? Yeah. Oh, everything. Okay. We're that... into the mines, get the crystal, mm -hmm. get a ship and fly into the desert. You understand that we know nothing about this individual. We only have his word that he's Yazgash's son. And you're just going to trust, okay. The trust. That's, listen, there's. I'm trying that on for size. I think you've gone. A full 180. I wish I had a flask full of whiskey right now. You know what? <laughs> Sometimes just I know you're going in with like honesty and stuff, but you I'm sure you noticed that. You remember when we met Hannah Good and I'm like, hi, I'm Poppy Tea Leaf. And she was like, Tea Leaf, Tea Leaf? And I was like, yeah. And you were like, I gotta kill those halflings now. Yeah. Okay, well, you may have noticed this time I just said Poppy. Okay, I'm just making sure because you're feeling all truthful and stuff. I'm trying to not lead with that anymore. Okay. Okay. There's a bit of a difference of the frontiers at risk of extermination under the heels of an evil empire. But you don't know that he's not working for them. That's all I'm saying. I'm pretty sure that he's not working for them. I just don't. Been, I don't. I don't think Yazgash's son is working for the empire. What proof do you have that he's Yazgash's son? And I'm not. I've not done a 180, Poppy. Okay. I have this honesty. It's still, a word it's hard for me to say. Trust is the easier word for me to say. And while we're walking, I'm gonna slow my pace down just like a step behind, and I'm gonna say, do not confuse my honesty and trust with weakness. And I'll make stealth check. Hey. Poof. Hey. You turn around, there's no zombie. I get the point. You go hide in the desert all you want. I got a watch to keep. And I'll wolf with wildfire and we'll run around. And that's my two wild chips for the day. Back at the camp. Gentlemen, ah, so good to have you here. Let me ask you, have you ever had good orcish mead? I uh, can't say I have. Yes, it's fantastic. Ha ah, well, I whistle for my horse. Cal, come here. And I take horse and pull off this wineskin. I was almost out, and so I thought I would share this as we were heading back to Fort Rushing Water to finish this off. Here, and I take a big swig off of this. Here, young 
Connor, this will put hair on your chest. I don't think I can grow hair. <laughs> and I <laughs> grab it from you and, Not like, bad, very much struggle under the weight of this thing as I kind of, like, try to get it in my mouth. And it's Because we've established you don't have lips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's certainly something. And I, like, push it over to Makrin. That's Makrin. You should try this. Tell me, how does this compare to Dwarven Ale? Well, nothing can compare with Dwarven Ale. Have you ever heard of Grantha Scump? I have not heard of Grantha Scump. Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic story. He invented Dwarven beer. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yes. But I'll take a swig. Yes. And so I take a swig. Does it, does it remind me of Last Stop beer? Did you, of, did you have meat at... Of mead? There I'm sorry, mead? mead? There was mead had at the dinner at with the, the Amores the, family. Um, and no. then there was also oh. some... But this, hand, this is probably handmade out in the wild. Yeah. Meant for a while. I'm sure there also was something that at Thomas's funeral... <laughs> that was Shiny Moon. That was Shiny Moon. But yeah. I feel like that... Yazgash and Mazaga wouldn't, they would show up with a casserole right. <laughs> to the <laughs> funeral. So my character originally came with a pan flute, like, you know, but I traded that in for uh, brewer's supplies. Oh, that's nice. nice. So you just have, so, a, so like, this, a cask on the back of the horse the, that just the, is fermenting over time, right. and the horse shakes the, it. The, 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 the mead <laughs> is, it's not bad tasting, it's incredibly strong. Okay, so... Mokrin takes a swig of it, takes a drink of that, and well, that, that's mighty fine, Mr. Mr. Gaz. That, that'll take the shine off a gemstone, almost. <laughs> Excellent, it's my friend. It's the closest Excellent. thing to dwarven beer I've had since we've been out here. Mead it is. It is mead. Mm. And it is tasty and very relaxing on a nice evening as we're relaxing out here in the Caliban frontier. How long have you been out here, young Connor? Um, um... Uh, Makrin, when we leave the last stop? Uh, last stop was like four weeks ago. Uh, yeah, three, four weeks, something like that. Oh, and everyone is there is doing well, I suppose. As far as I'm aware. Three Had a little ago. trouble with, uh, it's really kind of one of the things that first dovetailed, but also spurred our connection out here. This Black Smokes gang, they've... Oh, the Black Smokes gang. Oh, you know of them. Oh. Out here, everyone knows them. I've had my run-in with them, and I have dispatched them, if you will. <laughs> they run fast away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, the Black Smoke Gang, they, they came in to the last stop. It caused some trouble. There was a fatality. But, but your mom's is okay. Fatality? Who... Uh, oh. uh, or there's, a, there's a human lad, uh, Thomas... Thomas. Yeah, worked with uh, Reza Bravestar, the sheriff there. Not Thomas. I don't know Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, everybody took it pretty hard. We, I didn't really know him either, but everybody took it pretty hard. And and at the talk of death, like Mokrin's voice starts to wobble just a little bit, you know. But they got over it, and 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 anyway, it drove us out there. Um, this Wiley, the head of the Black Smokes, Wiley smokes Moran. He, uh, Wiley. He, he hooked up with some bad dudes, and then they're the whole impetus for this rebirth of the Empire. Wiley Smokes Moran is behind it. Uh, or at least connected himself with, with bigger guys up to no good. He has had many bounty hunters after him. I myself would mind taking that bounty, of course. But I have never been able to find him. He always seems to slip through my fingers. Even when I get the Black Smoke's minions in my grasp, they tend to die. Mostly because I kill them. But they don't seem to answer any questions either. And I take it this Wily is the cause of your friend's recent demise. Yeah, it was uh, Wily's, Wily's partnered with some bad news. There was a un unnatural source. There was a, a lich. A lich? Yeah. Well, I've only heard about them from ghost stories my mothers used to tell me. Yeah, I, I didn't, it's it's completely unnatural magic. I didn't think, I didn't even know there was any that, that really existed and um, he caught us by surprise. Why, my friend, would you try to take one off? We, we actually didn't know that, we didn't actually know he was what he was. Yeah, and he killed your friend. Yeah, he done, he done doused his forge fire with, with one word. It's never easy to lose a friend. 
How are you coping? We're we're doing okay. It's uh, better. I think I might I might actually be doing one of the best because I it hit me so hard at first. But some of the others ain't talked about it much. Tell me, friend Macron, what was your friend's name? Macron's voice gets all gets all wavy, and he says it's actually a mock Macron. Macron. Yeah, it's 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 Macron. Macron. Well, Macron. Tell me, Macron, what was your friend's name? His his name was Gideon. Gideon Block. And he holds the wine skin up, the mead skin up. He says, to Gideon Block, may he be remembered as a hero of the Caliban frontier. He takes a big swig off of it and hands it over to you. Mockrin takes it and says, to Gideon Block, thinks to himself, the only man who can mispronounce my name. And then <laughs> takes a big swig and hands it over to Connor. I take it again. In my arms. It's okay, it's, Connor. You don't have to drink it. It's, it's fine. It, to, to Gideon Block, I take a chug and then hand hey, it Connor, back to Connor, give me you. a contact. I yeah. need to do Connor. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is drunk as a skunk. <laughs> That's it for Connor. <laughs> Fantastic. Bachran, you and I shall drink the night away as Connor <laughs> no longer with uh, Okay, take a nap, guys. All right, Connor. <laughs> You sleep well, my friend. Thank you. I don't wake me for watch, please. <laughs> Come, Bakr. You and I shall tell stories, reminisce about our battles amongst the people here in the Caliban. Well, see, a long time ago, way back in history, <laughs> when all there was to drink, but nothing. But... Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Caliban Frontier, is Ash King is our Dungeon Master. Brooke Bullock as Mokran Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Tealeaf, and Connor Schnold as Connor the Kobold. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician T.J. Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of Monument Studios, Andrew Sitkoff, and TabletopAudio.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word out about us, If you like what you've heard, make sure to rate us and leave a comment. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and reddirtdnd.com. Tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D and share us on social media. And we have new content on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash reddirtdnd. And check us out on our YouTube page. Just search Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. We have several giving levels, including early listening to shows and access to our Discord server. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Caliban frontier. All right, and so my mysterious orc friend, you are currently engulfed by Mm -hmm. this creature. Just take your arms out and start spinning. <laughs> oh. Become your own reverse. Tornado. It's okay. I have him right where I want him. <laughs> if you spin the opposite direction. It'll slow him down. What brings you all out here? You tell us your name, Sandmaster, and I'll tell you mine. <laughs> he says an orc. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's where it was leading I to. I know it was. <laughs> you set it up, I spike it. <laughs> you got a horse? Of course. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no one can talk to a horse, of course. Unless, Unless of course, course, the horse is the wonderful Mr. Uh, I can talk what's to a horse's name. I can talk to all horses, really. <laughs> if I want, if I had a mind to. A pegasi is a pegasi. <laughs> Apparently, the people accept him this way, but maybe you should get. I don't you know. know. In the theater of the mind, I feel like we're one foot in front of this guy, whispering to each other like, I can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> He's just too nice to comment. <laughs> I'm telling you, we need our own secret language. <laughs> we spend the next few uh, days as we wander towards Fort Rushing Water, learning Pig Latin. How do you know her? She's my mother. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> No! <laughs> That's a Patreon. I am an older child. Way early. That's it's fine. Gonna be way early. That's it's fine. Gonna be way That's early awesome. in the episode. That's awesome. the Patreon. I am an only child. I demand rep- like <laughs> me and Windrunner are it. Yet again. 
Poppy and Carrie are both stunned <laughs> with the sexuality of someone in this world. Hey, They're I assume children, <laughs> which means, you know. <laughs> yes, Gash has lived a long time, and she seems very willing to give love to anybody who will love her in return. I know, I know. But I just like the scream of the what. <laughs> <laughs> the last time that happened was Jubilee saying, yeah, we worked for the tea leaves. Yeah, the last time we didn't chase that was whenever we didn't ask Iopics all the stuff about the font and the ghost down <laughs> Um, yeah, but see, you're like adding like an 11, and she's like a solid six. <laughs> Mockery just... looks at Poppy with a kind of a raised eyebrow like, like. A six? That is all I read, a six? <laughs> the steam firestone powered engines that. And I don't want to trade it. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bro, I gotta tell you, Michael, every, everything you're saying is being said in my head three seconds before your mouth opens. It's just Johnny. He just, he awesome. just ever turned Johnny since, up. Awesome. Ever since this character it's popped awesome. up at the table, I love it, almost everything you said um, has popped up in my head right before. I would have to come back down um, and... Um, <laughs> Is that what it sounds like? Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Not in feathers. my sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you wanted to, I could make it. <laughs> um, no, the tingly wingly is bad. They caused a little trouble. Everybody's okay. They caused a little trouble at... Everybody's uh, not okay. At Thomas at is the... dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just hear this voice in the back. <laughs> Thomas is dead. Thomas is dead. <laughs> yeah, but he was just a minor NPC. He was, <laughs> I mean, Gideon cared about him, but mostly. I cared about poor Thomas. You don't know. Thomas could have been. Gaz Reason loved Thomas. <laughs> Thomas could have been Gaz's best friend growing up. What do you know? Yeah. Oh, that's true. 